In today's video, it is finally time to bring in a new midfielder. We got 230 million to spend. We can basically sign anyone we want. Is it gonna be someone like Leon Goretzka from Bayern Munich? 89 rated. He's gonna cost us like 150 mil. Or maybe someone with a bit more experience like Marco Verratti. Or maybe going for someone with incredible potential. The man of the moment. The man who dominated Man City in the Champions League last night. Eduardo Camavinga. We've got big decisions to make. Now, we're still in December. We've got games against Liverpool and Chelsea before we can get into the transfer market. But in today's episode, I want to sign that midfielder. And if you are enjoying this Man United career mode, y'all know what to do. Drop a like in the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. And let's go. All right, boys. First press conference question. Don't replace Nkunku. He hasn't been all that bad. Instead, try out a two cam and a one CDM formation with Bruno and Nkunku at cam and too many at CDM. Okay, um, do you want me to get absolutely ripped apart defensively like if i play with two cams and just one cdm you bet i'm gonna be conceding four goals every single game that's not happening we're sticking to this formation next up fete valverde would be the perfect signing considering how real beat man city in the champions league now initially i did think about fete valverde because you know of that existing overall that he's got valverde is very very op but then i was watching the game against man city last night and it was in valverde who was the dominant force Let's be real, it was Eduardo Camavinga. And I'm thinking, having Camavinga in this team with the stats he's got is literally perfect. He can do the defensive work, he can do the offensive work. Plus, with too many, I think that partnership will be unbelievably fun to watch. So, if I had to choose between Valverde and, of course, um, Camavinga, I think I'm choosing Camavinga. The decision's not final, though. And finally, one Bisaka has not been performing well lately. I think signing a right back is a good decision. Pedro Porro is a good option. He's got great potential. Pedro Porro is kind of linked or has, you know, a deal with Man City. Signing him, I think, is a bit messy. So we're probably not going to go for him. But yeah, replacing Juan Bisaka is certainly an option. And I wanted to ask you guys this question. We're going to sign a new centre mid in this window. Should I be allowed to sign maybe a right back, you know, replacing Juan Bisaka? That would mean we'll be making two signings in the winter window. This could be the last season of this career mode if we win the Champions League. So do we want to maybe just bend the rules a little bit by signing an additional player in, in January. Let me know if you guys think that's the right thing to do. Otherwise, we'll stick with the one transfer rule in January. I'd love to know. But for now, that one transfer is 99% going to be that midfielder. Later the episode from the last one, we didn't particularly have the best of episodes, but I thought Marcus Rashford had, had done really well, so kudos to him, wins played of the episode. Can somebody tell me why Fulham are sixth in the Premier League? This makes absolutely no sense. Yo, we've got Liverpool in a couple of days, I'm still going to prioritise that game. Good chance to play the likes of Darwin Nunes, Marcus Rashford maybe. We'll also play in Kunku, even though stamina is super low, so I can play Bruno in the game I want. Scotty McTominay can play, Lindelof can play as well. We'll play Dalo. That's good enough rotations. And hopefully we can pick up the three points and stay top of the Prem. Absolutely we can. What a performance. Liverpool are outside the top four. That's incredible. And they are, what, eight points off us? We win this. We create 11-point gap between us and Liverpool. That would be huge, guys. We're fighting neck and neck with City. We can't afford to slip up. All right, boys, in terms of the lineup, this is, I think, what I'm going to run with. Fowler's kind of low on stamina, but I still want to play him. They've got Salah, Jota, Mane. No Luis Diaz. That's good to see. But Liverpool have gone ahead and signed Tony Cruz. Fair play. Let's get into this. They've not got Virgil van Dijk in there. That's great. All right, guys. Let's go. We need to win this game against Liverpool. Against the big teams, we have uh, huffed and puffed. That's the best way to put it. I don't want that to happen. Here. Liverpool are one of the teams... I think in this series, we do really well because of the high line they use. And we could be getting our first goal of the game. Lewandowski strikes first, but Alisson with a good save. There you go. That high line already being exposed. Okay, how is Salah this quick? Pau Torres has got no chance here. Mo Salah running nope. at us. Rafa Varane with a goal-saving challenge right there. Incredible. What are we looking at right here? It's Tony Cross with a set piece looking for Salah. Quick ball in. That should be easy for Pau Torres. And we get the ball away from the dangerous zone. And now we can hit them on the break. Jaden Sancho is somehow through on goal. How has this happened here? Jaden Sancho 1v1 now. Should score mm -hmm. this. How has he missed that? Oh, we get the ball again. Robert Lewandowski, powerful effort. Allison saves. How are we not leading in this game? I've got no idea. All right, let's whip this one in. Bruno Fernandes, come on. It falls for too many. Oh, we can't do much with it. Rafa Ran. 
can't even control the ball properly. What's happening? Maybe an early cross. <laughs> Remind me never to cross with Rafa Ron. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. This month's much better. But still didn't work. Fowler heading it. But yeah, that, that attack's gone. Sliding this one for Robert Lewandowski. Brings it inside. That was the worst finesse shot I've ever seen. How did he not put more power into it? How is it only nil-nil? I mean, we've literally created five or six world-class opportunities. Now it is Mo Salah down the left. Ferland Mendy's got a job to do. Jota again. Brings it back inside for Mo Salah. And Liverpool strike first. It's Mo Salah with the goal. Brilliant stuff from him. We lost to Man City in the last episode. Are we actually going to end up losing against Liverpool as well? Please no. Please no. Fabulous play from Mo Salah. Like, can't complain. That run to beat Ferland Mendy. And then the finish. Fair enough. We need to get back in this. A lot of people are like, I overcommit a lot with my defenders. Yeah, I am super aggressive with the way I defend. It works for me in some occasions. But in others, it's... Yeah, it's... It's not the best of tactics to run. So... That, that I completely understand. As look at that. They've broken through again. Ball played back in. And Mo Salah doubles Liverpool's advantage in this game. We've only got ourselves to blame. Because in the first 15 minutes, we had chance after chance after chance after chance to take the lead. We didn't. And now Liverpool and Old Trafford are having a field day. Are we going to end up embarrassing ourselves here? Looks like it. Absolutely does. Obviously, because we've got a big advantage in the Premier League over Liverpool, we can, you know, stay a bit calm about it and fight back but this this is not the kind of performances i want to be putting in chipping this one for sancho if he can get there first he does goes for the chip cleared off the line somehow no 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 Anthony has a chance cut back has to be a goal let's go sancho scores that was some smart play from Anthony and not panicking and going for goal the cutback was the right option and manchester united get something out of this credit to bruno for that early through ball Sancho deserved something that. Don't know what the Liverpool back line was doing there. Good finish, Sancho. We're back in this. Come on. Sadio Mane. Problems for us? Oh, Mane is just so quick. That's where I should stop overcommitting, you know, in those instances where I should just hold off and track back. But I don't do that. And it costs me as I just give the ball away cheaply. Mane inside for Jota. One Bissaka, thankfully, with the interception. That's a good ball in for Mo Salah. Cut back. How is Tony Cruz bottled that? That was the easiest chance in the world. And he's bottled it, keeping us effectively in this game. That's huge, as I can send Jaden Sancho on a run. And guess who are making the runs inside the box right now? It's Robert Lewandowski, but it's Bruno attacking it. I don't know why. Half time, and we've kind of clawed our way back into this game. We've got a chance. Second half, let's do this. Here we go with Jaden Sancho, and this could be the attack we need to get back into this game. Sancho is very quick. Cut back for Robert Lewandowski. Left foot into the roof of the net. Second half, it's Manchester United that strike first. And guess who's the goal scorer? Ah. Uh, Poacher, our number nine, the best nine in the world, as we are, of course, 11 with Liverpool. Sancho, incredibly, he helped create both the goals, by the way, in this game. Uh, actually scored the first one and, of course, created the second. We're back in this. Inside for Thiago, Jota. Back inside for Thiago again. We cannot let them score. Brilliant save from David Hea. We needed that. Right, the ball comes in. Ferland Mendy, please win that. We needed that. And now we can hit them on the breakaway. Here goes Bruno. Quick. Looking for that pass. And guess who it is? Jaden Sancho. He's kept himself onside. Still Sancho. Brilliantly done. 1v1. Oh, he slots it on calmly. That is utterly ridiculous. Straight from a corner. Ferland Mendy deserves credit for that. So does Bruno for just finding Sancho. And on the counter-attack, Liverpool suffer because of that extremely high line that they've got. And guess what? We're leading 3-2 in this game. What a comeback. What a turnaround. And, oh, it's just a beautiful finish from Sancho. It's been the Sancho game. Unreal from our new number seven. No, 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 no. Problems here. Problems. Good save again from us. Don't want to give away our lead. Oh, that turn from Sancho. Naughty using Trent's lack of defensive ability there. As I see maybe a crossing opportunity. Trying to attack it. Oh, it's chaos everywhere. Finally, Alisson gets to it. Henderson, that's such a good ball for Sadio Mane. Thankfully offside. We surely can see that. We've got 12 minutes basically left. We need to hold on to this. Oh, Sancho just using that pace. And then finds Robert Lewandowski who's kept himself onside. Releasing it back for Sancho. No, it's Bruno Fernandes who's made the run in behind. Superb finish. And look at them celebrate. We've made a 2-0 
down comeback against Liverpool. It's our captain Bruno Fernandes in that cam roll, back where he's at his best, scoring and getting us the result. 4-2, we've just beaten Liverpool in the Premier League in incredible fashion. Superb stuff. What a finish as well from Bruno. 4-2, game's done. Telling you all, man, this is the season we could potentially win it all because this team has got it all. For everyone saying you can maybe just use Fowler as first choice for the rest of the save, I don't think so, man. He really lacks stamina. And because of that, I'm going to have to change him around for Nkunku in a lot of the games. So, you guys get me? We can't use him, like, every game. So, for this one against Everton, fair few changes made to the team. We should still get through, and we do. Risk of losing three players. Well, who are these guys? Have we forgot to renew some of the contracts? Wow. Dalot, Rashford, and Luke Shaw's contracts expiring. If we don't renew them, they're gonna leave. Well, let's quickly renew their contracts. I'm not too worried about these two guys. Dalot, let's see if we can get a quick renewal done with him. Perfect. There you go. Luke Shaw as well, a quick renewal for him. Perfect. What about Marcus Rashford? Let's manually renew his contract and see if he accepts. I'm gonna try and give him a rotation squad role so he doesn't crib all that much, but that's not gonna be easy. Let's see. Rotation squad role for an 87 rated player. He wants important. Fair enough. Fair freaking enough. Um, let's see what else we need to offer him. A three-year deal. Sounds about right. There you go. He's willing to accept that. No release clause as well. And we'll give him a wage bump to about 140,000. Uh, 150. Let's do that. He should accept this. It's a solid offer. And Marcus Rashford renews with Manchester United. So nobody's gonna be leaving for free. Also, one more thing. I wanted to see our highest earners. Robert Lewandowski. 220,000, our highest earner. Why is Luke Shaw one of our highest earners? That makes no sense whatsoever. We just gave him, like, a ridiculous contract. Contract, I think. Bruno Fernandes is up there with the same uh, salary as Luke Shaw, which is crazy. It's probably the English tax, man. <laughs> the English tax. Can we build on that result against Liverpool? Now we played Chelsea. We win this game. It's already a four-point gap over City. We'll just be increasing it at this point. Again, Fowler is going to keep playing. If he's fit, I just trust him to dominate in that midfield. So that's going to be the team we rock against Chelsea. They're playing five at the back, you know. I'm not going to lie. In five at the back, Darwin Nunes is way better to defend to deal with that because Lewandowski gets crowded out. So a bit of a tactical game being played. Let's hope it works. We did it against Liverpool. We now need to do it against Chelsea. But hopefully this time around we don't go goal down. That's that's the aim. We need our midfield to be on point today because we're up against a five-back system, which has always been an annoying system to play against. As Anthony does really well. Getting an early goal in this game would be the dream. Ben Chilwell now looking for Lukaku. That's smart from Rafa Run, and we can maybe hit them on the break but that's the problem this five back system Chelsea have got is just so draining to play against every time you get a counter they've got three players standing there ready to just hound you and it's so difficult to do anything. Looks back for Chilwell. Oh, he's done me there. Lukaku cutting this one back for Havertz. It's brilliant. What a save from David De Gea. I think Pulisic was offside anyways, but that was ridiculous from De Gea. Oh, here we go. Pulisic. Good stuff. Ball back in. That was very smart from De Gea. I think he learned from that Salah goal we conceded earlier on in the episode. Oh no, Lukaku's through on goal. Pau Torres is tracking back, but they find Pulisic. That is another ridiculous save from De Gea. Ziyech looks inside for Havertz. That's a good ball in. Lukaku could attack it. 1B Saka. You know what? In this episode, he's actually been decent. Now, I'm reconsidering our thought process of whether we need to replace him or not. Right now, though, it's Anthony on the attack. We can do something special here. Would be amazing. Nunes goes for goal. Big deflection, but not enough to get us the goal. Anthony. Lovely. Finesse shot. Oh my god, that's a potential goal of the season contender to do that against Chelsea. That was probably the most satisfying finesse shot I've scored. Literally pinpoint top left corner and the way it curled as well. Oh my god. And he also floored in goal of Conte in the process. Can I get a better angle on that? Yep, this is perfect. Look at that for a goal from Anthony. That was beautiful. 1-0 up against Chelsea. We needed something like that to get the lead against them. And we got it. Also, can we just appreciate this moment here? Anthony versus N'Golo Conte. Took a touch inside. Conte gets wrong-footed. Floored over there. And then, of course, Anthony does what he does best. Curling it in top corner. Oh, Hakim Ziyech. Dangerous. Oh, no, 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 no. Still Ziyech, all the hard work to get that lead. I don't want to give it away so easily. Please win the header. Lukaku wins that. No way. Shocking defending from us there. How do we give Lukaku that much space and all the hard work to take the lead gone? 
A silly goal like that. It's 1-1. One, one. Oh, that's such a good ball for Havertz. Varane is tracking. Cross comes in for Romelu Lukaku. First time effort. That's the second time he's done this to us. How is Lukaku so good on the volleys? I have no idea. But Chelsea have taken the lead in this game. What a finish from Lukaku. You know what? Just got to applaud. The fact that it's it's against this former club that he scored a brace. It's kind of annoying me. I was, I think, wrong with the decision to play Nunes. He hasn't had the best of games. So I'm bringing on Lewandowski. Plus, a bit of Marcus Rashford wouldn't really hurt us right now. So super aggressive change. Rashford to the left. Sancho at cam. Let's hope this works. Oh, no. It's not good for us. Good save again from David De Gea. That was Broha. We know he's a young talent. And he looked good in that instance. But now Chelsea again with the chance. This should be Lewandowski. And we get it away. Not really. Just what are we doing, man? We need to be clearing our lines easier. What can Sancho do here? He's got options. He's got a ton of them. Still Sancho. Oh, that's... How is that not a foul? He didn't get the ball. But man, we deserved something from that attack. As Sancho gets it again. Finesse shot. Jaden Sancho gets it. And it's two all against Chelsea. What an episode he's had. This was with his weak left foot as well. Sancho gets the equaliser against Chelsea and we're back in this game. Too many with the assist, but how has Sancho pulled that off with his weak left foot? I've got no idea. Two goals of the highest order in this game. And we're at least getting something out of this with about eight minutes left. Let's keep pushing. We tried, guys, but we couldn't get the winner. But to get a draw from this in the circumstances, I think decent. We'll take the draw. All right, guys, just one more game to wrap up. And then we will be in the January trans window, which is going to be super exciting. Going to certainly make some changes for this one. And Kunku can come in. Rashford as well. We'll give Lindelof a game. Dalot, maybe. And Big Dean Henderson. A lot of changes, but we should still get through with a win here against Palace. We do. Let's go. And we should be in the January trans window now. The trans window is open. Players like Tuanzebe and Van de Beek have gone. We've got the money we need to sign any midfielder in the world. We now need to make a decision on who we want to get. Anyways, um, we're in the Premier League right now looking solid. A game in hand over City. What did I just do? Um, anyways, a game in hand over Manchester City and we're still two points clear of them. I'm telling you, this is the season we win the Premier League. Right now though, it's time to focus a bit on transfers. We need to get that sentiment. Before that, though, I want to see if we can make Bruno Fernandes a cam. It'll take about 22 weeks, which is a bit of an L, but we can still play that position. He's doing incredibly well. No problems whatsoever. It's now time to decide who should we go for. For me, these are the three options. An experienced veteran in Marco Verratti. Goretzka is a bit of a beast in his prime or someone who can grow rapidly in Kamavinga. I want to just see how much will each of these players cost us and then decide. Marco Verratti should be a good bargain, I feel. I'm going to see 60 million as my first offer for him and just see what PSG say. That is an absolute steal for Marco Verratti. I'm not going to lie. 61.7 million for him is an absolute bargain for those stats. The issue with him is he's not the kind of player who can, you know, go up and down all that much. In real life, yes, he can on FIFA. Not really because look at the stamina. Look at the acceleration and sprint speed. I don't know why he's got those stats in game because he's a lot more quick than what FIFA says he is. So still unsure about Marco even with the price. Let's see how much Goretzka would cost us. All right, boys. Now looking at Leon Goretzka. I think I think he would cost us a fortune. Gonna try 100 million to see what Bayern say. To be honest, that isn't too bad. 113.9 million for Leon Goretzka? That doesn't seem too awful, you know. What about Kamavinga? He might be the most overvalued player among these all because of that low overall. But trust me, in six months, I reckon he can go up to an 85 easily. Similar like what happened with too many. We're negotiating with Don Carlo Ancelotti, the manager who's just led Madrid to another league title. And of course, a Champions League final. I'm so tempted to sign Kamavinga. I just feel like he fits the, the kind of rhythm of the, the signings we've made in this Man United career mode. Signing younger, extremely talented players like Anthony, like too many, like Pau Torres. He seems to fit that mold and that's why I kind of want to sign him. But how much is this going to cost us? 60 million is going to be my first off. Yeah, yo, 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 yo. That is an absolute bargain. What are these offers? How is that working? I thought they'd be asking 80 million for us, from us. 65 million for Kamavinga. I'm sorry, Verratti. I'm sorry, Goretzka. I want to do this. I want to sign Kamavinga for 65 million. Controversial signing the lowest overall player among all, but I want to do this. 
is going to agree with the rotation drill, but I am going to make him a starter. He's more than good enough for that. A five-year deal works for me as well. No release clause. Absolutely perfect. What else are we looking at? The wages seem very reasonable as well. Submit offer, and he's willing to accept that. We've just signed Kamavinga from Real Madrid. Let's freaking go. There you go, boys. The signing's been announced. What kit number should we give him? Number eight looks nice. Number eight looks nice and come up and go. We're gonna give him that. But first things first, chucking a box-to-box -box development plan on him because I know that's gonna skyrocket his overall. Let's put him in the first team and see how it looks. All right. Let's put Kamavinga over here. Fowler can go on the bench for maybe Scotty McDominay. Maybe now. We'll keep him in the reserves because I won't be using him as a super sub. In games where I need to play him, I'll just put him on but that's how the team's looking like i like it a lot kamavinga signed and sealed i need to know what you guys think about potentially signing a right back because i'm feeling with the team we're building this good enough to win the champions league and if this is the last season of this career mode i want to sign a world-class right back to go along with it so let me know what you think drop like if you enjoyed today's episode subscribe for new round here there could still be more surprises because we are in the transfer window champions league knockouts coming as well and catch up for the next episode peace